Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be introducing you to the new features of Chassis Sim version 3.18. In particular, I'm going to be introducing you to the new auto circuit generation features that we found in Chassis Sim version 3.18, which should greatly assist you coming, uh, to come up with a high fidelity circuit model in a matter of minutes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build on some of the techniques that we've discussed when we've previously discussed circuit modeling and then we'll introduce the auto circuit generation features as they are appropriate so let's get started now what we've done is i've loaded my calf uh, is that like with everything else in chassis sim if we're going to um, use any auto circuit generation feature or any auto modeling feature we need a car file and the appropriate monster file that goes with that particular car file now I've got to be a little bit circumspect about where this particular uh, data came from. However, I can assure you it's real live data from a real live race car. So consequently, it forms a very good basis for our um, tutorial. So our first step is to generate the curvature file. Now, we do that in the usual way. We go to circuit and we go to create filter curvature file. I import my monster file. I say click here if using my monster file. I set my frequency of the my monster uh, file to um, 50 hertz. This has got um, left-hand turns as positive, so I don't need. So I can leave this um, tick box here. Click here if AY is positive for right-hand turns blank. Also, too, the lateral acceleration signal for this particular data was sampled separately, so I don't need to worry about that. I can leave it as frequency filter. I simply click on output curvature file, select the particular track. Click on open and so to generate the file i've got to click on okay now i've already done this uh but i've already done this previously in the setup to this tutorial but if i clicked on okay i'd be writing it again so that's my first step now my second step is to generate my bump profile now in my bump pro in the bump profiling in chassis sim version 318 you'll notice here we've added a few things you'll notice here let me just import my monster import file and I'll walk you through these new features. The first thing you'll notice is that we're now taking into account is that we've now got this thing called allow auto bump scaling. What this does is this now takes into account the car's lateral and longitudinal acceleration when we start adjusting for um, what the bumps are looking like and we found this to be a very very powerful feature and we've tested it on a number of different race cars with some pretty good results. So to enable that feature I click on allow auto bump scaling and I need to enter the sign of my lateral acceleration which in this case is minus one. I'll click on create bump profile and I'll enter in my usual uh, and I'll enter in my usual parameters. The dampers here were zeroed. I'll put in my maximum bump rate of 0.2. So as you can see, these are pretty much the recommended default settings as we've outlined in the csim underscore track underscore creation dot doc document you'll find in your help directory. Now, I've already generated this bump profile, but if uh, I wanted to um, uh, execute that, I would just simply click on OK and it would go through starting the usual bump gener uh, auto and would start the usual bump profiling procedure. I'm not going to do that because I did this previously. I'll now go to my bump profile, my track. I'll open with my notepad just to do um, sanity check and that's pretty much what that, what that looked like. Now, in most cases, you're not going to need to do this. I'm just showing you what that particular bump profile looked like. Now, now, our next step, now that we have our curvature and our bump profile, is to generate the altitude road camber file. Now, to generate this, we just simply go to circuit, edit circuit altitude camber, generate circuit altitude and road camber, and this brings up this, uh, this facility to generate altitude and road camber data. Let me state from the get-go that this does not replace GPS data, quite to the contrary. This is designed as a backup for when you don't have GPS data. So what this is going to do is this is going to take our car file, it'll take our monster file, and it will fill in the blanks of when we don't have altitude data. So consequently, it's very, very important to keep in mind that this is something that you use when you don't have road, cam uh, when you don't have road camber data uh, and you don't have that from the GPS. So what I'll do is to um, facilitate that, I need to import my curvature file. I need to import my bump profile. 
I will import, now I'll just simply navigate to what I want my altitude road camber file to be. And click on open. And I'll click here to import my monster file. And I'll click here to indicate that the dampers were zeroed on the ground. And I'll indicate that the sign of my lateral acceleration in this case was minus one. And to generate it, I just click here to generate altitude road camber data. And what I'm going to do is I now click on OK. And now what we'll do, as you can see, that we've gone through and we've generated that altitude road camber data. And just to show you what that's actually going to look, uh, uh, to show you what that's actually going to look like, if we go through and take a look, that as we've gone through and generated this, you'll see that we've got a file here called Altitude Camber Test and Altitude Road Test. What this does is this shows you what the actual for, uh, of what the uh, uh, this generates different vectors for the road camber and your altitude road road camber. And what you can do is using the uh, Edit uh, is using the edit current altitude uh, road factor uh, is edit um, the current uh, road altitude file, and I'll import my altitude camber file. We can see here that what we've got is we can import our road camber from GPS or import our altitude from GPS. So we're in a position to mix and match our data here. So that's a very, very powerful feature that uh, we can um, uh, bring, to, uh, bring to bear using this altitude road camber feature. And that just comes in particularly handy when you've got altitude GPS data, but you don't have road camber data. So this is actually a pretty handy trick to use. But for the time being, we'll um, stick with using um, our auto-generated altitude camber. Now, one thing I do want to touch upon you can see here that when we've generated our altitude road camber data, we had an option to generate elevation from damper data. I would only use that if I was really confident in the aero model of the car. And really, when you're confident in the aero model, what this will do is it'll really nail down those far, uh, the, it'll really help you nail down those crests and rises in the circuit. But honestly, I would probably say that if you're starting from a blank sheet of paper, you really don't know what your arrow do, is doing, leave that blank for the time being. Now, our last step in this process is now we, now we use our auto group determination. So we'll click on our auto group determination. And what, I'm going, uh, and what I'm going to do is I click here to import my monster file. I'm going to click on run auto group matching. I need to specify what I want my grip file, uh, what I want my grip file to look like. Grip factor, my track. Click on open. As you can see, I need to import my circuit and my bump profile, which I did previously from when we ran the altitude road, uh, the auto gen alt altitude road camber feature. I'll click on my altitude camber file. And I'm going to click on that. I'm going to model bumps, and I'm going to use the auto, um, uh, and I'm going to use the altitude camber file for this. I click on run auto grip matching. I click on OK, and now it's going to go through and do its. Uh, now it's going to go through and do its um, determination. So go off. Get a, uh, uh, so we now go off. We get a coffee, and we come back when it's uh, when when we come back when it's finished. Okay, so. It's finished the auto group calculation. You'll know it's done because you'll see starting auto group calculation and finished auto group calculation. So we click on cancel and now we're ready to run this up. So what we'll do is we'll go to circuit, we'll go to circuit data. And all I've got to do now is click on my import grip scale factor. And that's grip factor my track. Click on this. I'm going to set up a data log and I'm going to run, uh, and, um, I'm going to run that through. So we clicked on OK to commit those curvature files, those uh, bump profile we generated, the grip factor file, and our altitude road camber file. Now, to save some time, I've already gone through and I've run a simulation, but we just basically do the same thing as we would have always done. We just click on Start Simulation, we click on the Start Simulation button, it does its thing. To show you the sort of correlation that you can expect using this auto circuit generation, here you go. Colored is actual, black is the end result of using our auto circuit generation. And as we can see, bumps are all matching up, our steers are matching up, but more importantly, take a look at this.
Here are our histograms. And to show you the more pertinent driver uh, to show you the more uh, uh, to show you the more pertinent driving um, uh, channels, as you can see, this all matches up. Now, a thing to note is that this is not designed to be the one shot in the locker thing that you just hit this, this, and that, and it's perfect straight away. To try and claim it's going to be perfect straight away would be absolutely foolhardy. However, as we can see. Look, uh, 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 as we can see, looking at the data, in a matter of minutes, we have got a representative circuit model that we can start using straight away. And that is the power of these auto circuit generation features. Now, it doesn't replace, it doesn't, uh, it, now, it, uh, it's not a replacement for the circuit refinement features that we've spoken, that um, we have spoken about on other uh, video tutorials but rather what it does is it gets you much closer a lot quicker so consequently all that you're doing now once you've got these uh, once you've used these auto circuit generation features is that now you're just fine tuning but look don't take my word for it if you're an existing chassis sim user by all means crank out um, your old circuit models run through this process and find out for yourself or if you're not a or if you're not a chassis sim customer request a download and we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to do it and you can find out for yourself what a powerful feature this is